Hi everyone, happy Tuesday. So first off, um, I do want to apologize. Yeah, y'all didn't get any videos this weekend, even though I did record Friday's um, collection flip through. I just never got around to posting it. And um, so, I, well, I'll talk about that in a minute. And Saturday, the live stream didn't happen. So I... I think it's the weather. It seems like fall, unfortunately, while it's my favorite season, fall is the worst season of the year when it comes to my fibro and chronic fatigue flare-ups. Um, just because it's, you know, 30, 40 degrees one day and 70 to the next. And this is where we bounce around. It seems like the most, and especially the pressure changes a lot. So, um, that on top of just, you know, the new job had, has just taken a ton out of me. And um, my completed pages this month is going to be pitiful. I unfortunately, um, but well, anyway, um, long story short, I just woke up Saturday just feeling awful. I had felt better the previous weekend, but I guess we had another big uh, switch around of temperature and pressure this week. And just the weekend, I just felt exhausted and worn out and it just wouldn't have been a good live stream experience for anybody involved and since um joshua dunbar was nice enough to donate that book i want to make sure i do it during a live stream where i at least seem reasonably awake and um plus i hadn't had a chance to promote it as much as i wanted so you'll see a little bit of that this week i will be doing that this next saturday um and it will be happening because i want i want to be able to do that this month and there'll be other books involved so um the plan this is probably the way it's things are going to be very flux fluctuating fluctuating um in flux there you go having trouble with my words today Things are going to be kind of in flux probably through the end of the year. Um, I have some things I have to study for for work. I have certification, a certification I have to get. Um, and between that and the weather changes and just still learning and onboarding, like it's just going to be kind of haphazard probably through the end of the year. I'm still going to finish out my coloring tags for the year because um, I do want to see those through. However, you're just probably not going to see a lot being colored for me over the next few months unless it's color by number. So, um, But Wednesday, I hope to get out that coloring book collection p part, uh, I don't know, 12, 13. Um, I'm hoping to get that out that I missed on Friday. Friday, well, we'll talk about this at the end. I've babbled on t for three minutes now, and you guys want to get to the goodies. So, um, I'll talk a little bit about the schedule at the end. I probably will post something on the community page about it for the week, too. So, I have some new books. Um, some of them are, I think, this one's like a new release this month or something. But for the most part, I think this one's the biggest new release. Um, and I just got this today. So, um, I think this was released earlier in the month for the UK, um, but Amazon's release date wasn't until, um, this week. So, let's go ahead and get started, and we will start with the big one on the front, since, um, I'm sure there are dozens of flip-throughs of this book at this point, but, um, you know, I... People tend to seem like they like my flip throughs too, so I will of course continue doing them as well. I honestly wasn't going to buy this at first until I saw the flip throughs because when it said Rooms of Wonder, I just don't tend to like coloring interiors or houses or anything like that. And so I, you know, at first was like, I don't think I'm going to like this one. But um, then I saw some of the pictures and I'm like, you know, add it to the collection. And it does look like there's quite a few pages I would like to color. So I did change my mind on that. So this is typical 
Joanne Basford sized books. Um, they are with a average size coloring book. They're not quite as tall, but they are wider if you're not familiar with them. They are double sided. So let's get started. Now I'm going to try to get it to where we can see both pages. There we go. Because I got that, no, that had the opposite effect. Because I got that new mat, my lighting has had to change a little. Ooh, that's real bright. There we go. That's a little better. All right get started. Introduction. If you would like to pause and read that. Looks like there's on each page or double page spread there's a secret key and a door. Some tips. Don't try to color right into the binding. Well, <laughs> like, I try not to, but this looks like there's at least a little space between that and the binding. I will have to see with the double page spreads. I mean, that's a good tip, but when the book is printed so that your objects are in the binding, it's a little hard to, go, you know, go by that tip, so... So this looks like a double page spread. Very, uh, that's, that's a lot of stuff. <laughs> the cats would have a field day in here. Knocking stuff off. Now see, I like these pages because you could just do like an object a day. Color, you know, one a day or something like that. <clears throat> So that's pretty cool. I like the mandala right there. This definitely, um, <clears throat> What is going on with my voice? So her previous book, I don't think was as detailed overall. Um, so I feel like this one's a little different in that it's much more, much more detailed than her previous book. I like this one a lot. I like the beehive one a lot too. With the sunflowers. I'd... I've seen a lot of people do this one already, and this this is a real pretty picture too. 
I like the different bottles here on the left. I like the little bunny. It's just chilling out right there. I wish my closet looked that organized. Quite a few um, pattern pages in this one. I'm a little surprised at that. I don't mind them, per se, but I just... I don't know if those are technically super popular with the majority of people right now, so I guess I'm just a little surprised at those. Love this picture. Actually, both these pictures are really awesome. Yeah, that's what I totally need to make my shower into. It's just the jungle. I don't think the cats would appreciate the addition of a parrot. Definitely a little steampunk themed few of those pages. I really do like the pages with the little um, objects like that. Those are just like a lot less intimidating to me. A whole lot easier to color. I love this one with all the different owls. Looks like they are the Postal Service. That'd be a cute one to do for like birthdays. And then you've got a test page at the end, which is always helpful. Especially in this book because like gel pens and things like ink tents um, definitely wouldn't use alcohol markers in this if you want to keep the pages behind them clean. But um, I do like when they include test pages like that. So there's Rooms of Wonder. Um, I wouldn't say it's my favorite Joanna Bassford book just from the initial initial lookings. Um, just again, there's still a lot of pages in here I like, and I will definitely be coloring in this, but again, I'm just, I, there's other books of hers that I think I would reach for and, and color more pages in overall, but there's quite a few pages in here that I like quite a bit, so, so it's still a good purchase good also a good addition to the collection so all right next up even though I haven't colored in my other witches book by Coco Wyo I keep seeing pictures from modern witches and it's pretty cute so I ended up getting this as well um, so modern witches by Coco Wyo 
Amazon printed book. For those of you not familiar with Coco Wyo. I love their black background books. They're just, like I said, I this feels like the same type of artist who did their Galaxy Queen book. And it's just stunning. I love the colors, or colors. I love the line art. It's just really well done. And of course, I love anything that has mostly black backgrounds too. very cute she's almost got a 90s vibe with that flannel going on and those uh the biker shorts and the high tops oh there you go yeah as a witch i definitely would um I would have the ability to multitask, but like, I wonder if I could put like, you know, a spell on myself so that I could have the focus to multitask. Like, I would have the ability to conjure spells so that, you know, I could brush my teeth and use my phone and do all these different things at once. The problem is right now my brain doesn't have the capacity to do more than one thing at once. So, I would need to get that fixed as well. Oh, she's cute. I like all the little plants. Kind of like a little plant bitch. The little kitty who looks concerned for some reason. I actually saw somebody complete this book in the Coco Wyo Facebook group the other day. She did a real good job. I wish I could remember who it was. Um, but it looked great. She did a really good job. I love her hair. I love that her hair is basically like the night sky. What in the world is going on over there? We're doing some reorganizing. I bought a uh, electronic like standing desk and so um, I've got to shift some stuff in the room around. Wow, there's a lot coming out of the end of that broomstick. Oh, there you go. Magic the laptop to do all your college papers. I wish I could cast a spell and get get my work done. That would be that would be fantastic. I think it's a witch bakery. Oh, that's cute. Look at him winking there. Adorable. <laughs> I like the kitties in this one a lot. Shouldn't surprise anybody. I'm sure. I just feel like you get way too much draft like I mean more power to her for for you know maybe she puts a spell on herself so she is nice and toasty warm on her broom going through the sky I'm just saying so much updraft would be created with a skirt that short like her little PJs
Y'all, I think I totally forgot during my coloring chat to tell y'all I watched the new uh, Hocus Pocus because I love the original. And this reminded me of it, watching this. I like the little bows on that skull. So cute. And I really liked it. I mean, the first one was just such a classic that I think it would be really hard for... It's always hard. It, it's unusual to ever find... A second movie in a series that's better or as good as the first it it doesn't happen all that often so I can't say it's better well she looks like she is not having a good day all those eyes in the background I was worried about the bats it's the eyes but anyway it was still a lot of fun I I really enjoyed it Especially when she was talking to um, Alexa or um, the Alexa app. That was like really funny. I thought it was very cute. I know probably a lot of people. I don't feel like anybody can be happy these days with any movie that's put out. Um, I wouldn't say I am super picky about my movies basically these days as long as they're enjoyable and I can laugh and they distract me for a couple hours you know that as long as they're entertaining I'm I'm not that picky when it comes to my movies and I think I've seen some real fun entertaining movies over the last few years but my god I love her shirt with that little cute bat on it that's so cute my god people get so bent out of shape like i just <sighs> i can't tell you how many times i've watched it looks like she's making more of a soup than a potion that might be who knows but um he wants to play with with the love potion that probably wouldn't end well so I'm assuming that's a love potion with the little hearts and whatnot. But um people just get so bent out of shape about stuff these days. Like I I know there's a lot going on. I know things aren't great and like trust me, every day I get on <laughs> I get more and more concerned about the current state of <laughs> our world. <laughs> I love her outfit it's like I said that feels so very 90s and I guess the 90s are kind of coming back around from what I can tell so but like I truly feel that you just can't make people happy these days anymore with movies like they just got every it's like people are looking for something to be upset by and it's because they're trying to, like, especially movies like the new um, Bill and Ted movie, any of the movies that are sequels to movies from the past, like Hocus Pocus, um, they ha they're going to modernize them a little bit. And they're just not going to recapture the the classic, right? It's, it's just going to be really hard. It's very hard. And, and they want new and old audiences to watch it. So I think that's it. People just want to be able to recapture like their youth or the, especially with movies like that, they want it to, I love her roller skates. It's like people want, I'm going on a tangent. I need to stop because I've slowed down. Anyway, my point being is I don't think you can make anybody happy these days with movies. Because every time we've finished a movie or a show, and I've been like, hey, that was pretty good. You know, not Oscar-worthy, probably, but it was a pretty decent movie. And then I go online and look at the reviews, and I'm like, did we watch the same movie? Anyway, that's all I have to say about that. Color the Natural World. I saw this on Coloring with Haley. Um, she's uh, one of my favorite channels on here. Uh, she's, she's real interesting. She has a lot of... Um, different types of animals and um she's got she loves frogs and i just like i'm fascinated by um all the frogs and like uh like the tarantulas and stuff that she has even though i would 
I, I couldn't own anything like that. <laughs> I'm like fascinated. Um, and, and she's going to college right now. Anyway, I just want to put a shout out to her channel because I always enjoy um, checking out her channel. And uh, I saw this um, during one of her flip throughs and had not seen it anywhere else. It's called Color the Natural World, a timber press coloring book by Zoe Keller. And I love nature coloring. So I had I wanted to pick it up. It is not quite as tall as a typical coloring book, but it is just a little bit wider. So a little bit smaller book, which I've really started embracing lately just because they don't feel like they take as much time. So Anyway, yes, we're going to get off that tangent because I really slowed down on that flip through because I was ranting. Sorry about that. <laughs> Save that for a colored chat, Michelle. So I'll put this here if you want to pause and read it. Basically, this is uh, di just capturing different parts of nature throughout the world. Um, Use the guide at the back of the book to learn about each ecosystem and the plants and animals that reside within it. So most of these, I believe, are double page spreads. And what's really cool about this book is that um, the other sides are blank. So they're one sided. So you can use your markers in here, which is really cool. You just don't see that very often in these types of books these days. So I, I'm very pleased that was one of the biggest things that jumped out at me about these books. So let me look at the back here. So for each one of these, like this one here is these cute little owls. Here's the guide. It says the Pacific Northwest Forest. A northern pygmy owl sits on a red belted conch mushroom. A spotted owl and owlets rest on moss and fern covered branches. I like that. I like that it's telling me what types of animals and what types of plants these are and, and mushrooms and things so that um, if I want to color them like they're like they're naturally colored, I can, you know, go online and do some research. So that is really cool. And there's a description like that. Kind of, it looks similar to Kirby Rosanna's, uh, his uh, Fragile World, where they had descriptions in the back. So like you've got the Everglades, the Western Alpine region, the Desert Southwest, Great Plains, Col Coral Barrier Reef, all kinds of neat ones. You have this bear chomping on this fish. Though that's definitely a set of teeth on that fish. So <laughs> and some snails over here. And they're not super complex images, you know, like they're they're like a medium complexity, I would say. Not a lot of background detail to them, which I really like. So this was in the water, and then I believe this is the seagull picking this group up for hit for what is going to be a very big meal. So I feel like these would be very doable with markers and a little bit of shading and either like because the background's not super detailed, like some pastel or maybe watercolor for the background. I'm not sure this is um, actually like a timber press printed book, so it's not Amazon paper. It feels pretty nice. I am just, and it's not super thin. As far as I can tell, I can't really see the images on the other side. However, I would need to do some testing in order to tell you for sure what works and what doesn't. Boy, he's just giving you the stink eye. Look at that. Look at that. Like, how dare you? The audacity of being in my business.
It's so cute stalking that butterfly. I mean, it's not cute for the butterfly, but... Alright, let me see if I can get through the... past the blanks here. Not all of them are double page spreads, it looks like. Or maybe they are. I don't know. It's hard to tell. What is that crocodile eating? What is he trying to eat? A snake? I think that's a snake. Oh yeah, it is a snake. Look at that. Looks like the uh, pelican's trying to get a bit, too. Boy, he's having a very bad day. <laughs> Little raccoon. And turtles. And then, like I said, back here you have your guide, and like, it does describe the animals and the different, um, like, trees and, and uh, leaf, trees, plants, and whatnot. So, like I said, if you want to color these kind of uh, specific to what they naturally look like, then, then it's a lot easier to do so. So I like that. And this is about the author. So yeah, very cute book. This looks like it was published in 2015, actually. So um, this has been around a hot minute, but I have not seen it out in the world much. So thank you, Haley, for showing that. I also got this one from, <laughs> got this idea from Haley. <laughs> the Pumpkin Killer, um, illustrated by Lainey Dow. This is a collection of scary characters and horror movies. These look like really simple, cute pictures. I actually saw one of these done. It wasn't just Haley. In the previous month's uh, showcase on Instagram, somebody had completed a page in here. And I thought it was stinking adorable. And I saved it to go back and figure out what the book was. And it was actually this one. So, you know. <laughs> I, I heard about it once. I was like, yeah, I kind of want it. Two times. Couldn't resist. This is an Amazon printed book. The Pumpkin Killer. Love the kitty. So, different tips and tricks. These are always pretty interesting because um, they tend to be very similar, I feel like, in books. Um, but you always come across some interesting things, too, I think. So I like that the black that was printed on this was like a good, legit black and not just a really dark gray. Like, it's, it's a good saturated black in these pictures, which I really dig. <laughs> oh, there's not, nothing wrong with that little guy. He's just having a good time with his balloons and his kitty. Now, see, I could probably have nightmares about that one. He looks like an alien. I would almost probably color that one green because he kind of reminds me a little bit of an alien. I like the toilet paper rolls next to him. That's definitely um, interesting. I like his whack-a-mole mallet. Like, he's going to run through the graveyard and just pound. Like, like a whack-a-mole, right? Like, the hands and the arms and the heads are going to come up. And he's just going to mallet them back into the ground. I mean, that's a pretty good weapon, in my opinion. Whack-a-zombie. Not whack-a-mole. Whack-a-zombie. Whack 
y'all the amount of Halloween and fall books I have picked up versus the amount that I'm going to color <laughs> for Halloween. <laughs> oh, it's pitiful. It's pitiful. It's just the way the month, month has worked out, unfortunately. I just have not... What's with the one leg here? Oh, no, there's the other one. I was like, why is she only got one leg? Like, what nunning accident would have caused... Would have caused her to lose a leg? But yeah, I love the nice thick line art on these. I usually don't do like, I, I don't like super like gruesome Halloween coloring. I don't mind the movies, but um, like in coloring, I'm not typically big on it, but I like more cutesy, a little bit creepy stuff, kind of like this. So this is pretty much right up my alley. That's some skinny legs on that dude. I mean, I just don't know if I could be terrified. Like, if I saw him from the waist up, yeah, but then I'd see those little legs. I'd be like, dude, you're going to snap those in half chasing me. All I got to do is outrun you. That was the one I saw that I think was on Instagram, and I wish I could remember who colored it, but I just thought it was so stinking cute. I mean, I felt bad for the pumpkin killer in the bunny suit. That one's cute. Anyway, I just thought this one was very cute, very simple. You, like I said, I might, you know, depending on the picture, I might would worry about the background, but for the most part, I think I would just color these and not worry about the background. I need to do that more often. I would probably color in a lot more of my books if I stopped worrying so much about backgrounds. So I did pick up a color by number. Um, I typically don't. Wow, why is it so bright on this cover? I think my lighting outside changed. It's kind of cloudy today, which is part of the reason I'm having trouble here. There's a lot of... Huh. Is that on purpose? So there's a lot of little white random dots on the cover here. So I almost wonder if that was just a printing issue. So, Stone Mosaic, I actually hadn't, I finished two Stone Mosaic books last year, never, I didn't buy another one yet, but then I saw this one, of course, this one is Halloween, and y'all know I love anything that's Halloween, so this is the, by Belba Family, make sure I got that right, yes, Belba Family, their Stone Mosaic series, these are really cool because they're like these different, well, obviously I will show you. This book belongs to this is the seventh book from the series so I need to get on the other ones their palette pretty much stays the same throughout just a pretty decent 22 color palette so you color in these different little rock shapes here and it gives you a picture I like all the extra little bats and stuff on these pages you can tell which way it's going to face because how the numbers are. So like all the numbers are facing this way. So this is going to be a landscape page. You can kind of see the face in this one. So some of these you can kind of tell what they look like. Oh, I think these all are all landscape. But I really enjoy these. They are quick, easy colors. They always, I think, come out with some really fun images. I would like to get a page or two done in this before the end of the month. I 
Okay, well, I'm not going to show you the entire book. Oh, there's a portfolio page. Not going to show you the entire book because you you know some, most of these pictures you can't you get kind of an idea, but for the most part, and the color palette's always on the other side. So we are finished, and yeah, that took a long time for the books. Um, so plans Wednesday. I'm going to drop a book on the floor. Wednesday, I'm going to hit the mic. <sighs> Wednesday, I'm going to post the video that should have ran on last Friday, which was the next part of my uh, coloring book collection and completed pages series. We are starting in the color by numbers. We are not going to finish it in the video. I will probably have two more parts maybe just one we'll have to see um, the color by numbers it slowed down a lot because I just have a lot of completed pages in the books so um, however I won't be posting another one till the first Friday in November so um, so I will post that one tomorrow I'm gonna put an explanation at the very start of the video because I will be talking about how it's Friday and and it's past me and it won't make any sense so so I'm going to post that tomorrow because I really want to go ahead and get that one posted. Friday, I'm going to do my book and supply haul for um, September and October. I'm hoping I get everything in this week. I might be short a few things, but that's okay. There's going to be a lot. It's going to be a lot. Um, so it's going to be pretty, pretty big video. Um... I've already done the book part, well, almost all the book part. I've got to do like these and stuff. Um, Saturday will be the live stream. Saturday or Sunday. You know, I'm going to run a poll. And the reason for that is some of y'all might be trick-or-treating Saturday night and just prefer I do it Sunday. So we're going to run a poll and see what people prefer. So it will either be Saturday or Sunday. My completed pages, which would have typically been this weekend, will be the next weekend. And that's going to give me a little bit of time, hopefully, to do a few more pages. Yes, it's going into November, but that's fine. It doesn't bother me. I will be wanting to color Halloween for a while because I just didn't get it out of my system this month. Um, so, so we'll have the live stream and the coloring book and supply haul this weekend. The next Tuesday will be the kickoff for November's tags. Then that Friday will be the next in the coloring book collection. Then we'll do completed pages. And then hopefully the next week I will be able to do a color and chat. So um, that's kind of the, the hopeful schedule. You know, things change as, as you've seen. Things can change. But that's kind of the plan I've got right now. I feel pretty solid about this weekend's videos. Um, if things go awry and I just can't get the book and supply haul together, you know, I may may move that one, but we'll just, we'll see. I'm going to try to do it on Friday, so, because I really want to get this done so I can put stuff up. Anyway, thank you all for being so understanding, um, and hopefully things will straighten back out soon, I hope. <laughs> um, but thanks guys for watching, and bye for now.